Hey everyone, it's Evan here from The Trade Risk with a trade recap for the week ending Friday, January 27th. So this is the third week in a row that I am recording a video covering all of the trades, all the swing trades that we closed out for the prior week. Uh, these are the trades that we send out to premium subscribers, and these are only the closed out trades. So in this week, we only had two closing trades. Uh, we do have other trades on, we have other positions that we may have taken partial profits on, but in order to keep things organized, I'm just trying to um, only show on a week-to-week -week basis the trades that are are done for win lose or draw uh, and this is this is everything not hiding any trades or or skipping anything um, and before we get into the video covering these two trades uh, if you do want to sign up for uh, these alerts to get these alerts in real time to participate in these trades uh, you can head to the traderiscom forward slash premium has a lot more they have a lot more info is there if you have other questions feel free to ping me or leave a comment below uh, so with that let's uh, let's jump into the two trades we closed out uh, the first is DE now this was a name that we were watching for quite some time uh, it's been a, a in-demand name, strong uptrend at all-time highs, and we've been we were looking to get involved in this um, for a number of days and weeks. It was kind of sitting on our watch list, and we finally got the chance uh, to do that on the 20th. That was last Friday, uh, is when we got into this stock. Uh, is when we got into this name. Uh, the reason we got into it was uh, this move higher here, a little bit of an expansion in range through uh, some uh, some recent consolidation and we got a nice close at all-time high so that was the trigger that was the entry to get involved with here on the 20th uh, we're swing end of day swing traders so our entry price was near the closing print at 106 67 that was the entry and uh, we sat with it for a couple of days it, it sort of just went in our favor uh, right from the beginning and we took 50% of this trade off up here at 108.25, lucky to get near the highs of the day as this starts to extend itself away from the 8 and 20 period EMA. We're going to start to take some of those profits off the table. Uh, so 108.25, we took 50% of the trade off. And you got to remember DE is not exactly, you know, it's not a Twitter, it's not a Facebook, it's 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 not all that volatile. Um, so this is more of a slower slow mover. Uh, but there's still, you know, there's still plenty of profit potential in these types of names. Um, they're just going to eat up more capital if you're trying to use stock. Option replacement can be good as well to alleviate some capital. Um, and you can still get nice trends out of them. Uh, so anyhow, uh, 108.25, that was the 50% mark where we took half of it off. And then the next day is when we exited the trade. Uh, as it started to break through the prior day's lows, had a little more uncertainty, we had other positions on in our portfolio. Uh, so we decided to let this go after just a quick day pop um, at 107.76. That was when we took the rest of it off, which is basically the close here on uh, the 26th. So um, a quick trade. Uh, three or four days, a little single, uh, made $190 if you're modeling it out on a $50,000 account, which is what I like to use for all of these uh, recaps. That way we normalize uh, the results in an easy you know, in an easy and concise way. Uh, so it would be a $190 gain on a $50,000 account and um, a nice single uh, in four days, little breakout continuation pattern, like it, um, and that was DE. Uh, the second trade that we closed out this week was UCO and UCO is um, is a 3x bullish ETF on USO and USO is an ETF that tracks oil uh, crude oil and um, we're gonna spend a little time looking at this because uh, this one's a little interesting right uh, that doesn't appear to be too much of a setup here um, and what I want to remind everyone is that when trading these ETFs that are tracking uh, in this case, crude oil, uh, which is trying to track the futures, spot futures contract uh, of that price, there is a lot of loss of precision when you're, particularly when you're going nowhere, when you're just consolidating kind of up and down, uh, alternating every day for th multiple weeks at a time, like is the case now in USO, uh, this ETF tends to, or it, it it actually does uh, lose precision over time. There's slippage and there's decay in the actual value here. And and what happens is these the chart doesn't actually reflect sort of the the true uh, price action, so to speak, of the underlying instrument. So 
What you need to do is look at the spot futures contract and an easy way to do that um, would be through stockcharts.com. Uh, if you look up WTIC, that is the ticker there for the light crude continuous contract. And you can see um, this is the formation that I was looking at when we got into this trade in USO or in UCO. So we're, we're trading, you know, ETF is kind of a derivative of the futures contract. And then you have a second derivative on top of it, which is UCO, which is a 3x ETF of USO. So there are there's a lot of loss of precision here. This chart doesn't look anywhere as clean and nice as perhaps the futures contract does, which is why I would always recommend looking at the futures contract to uh, base your entry and to, and to get your exact timing down and your trade setup, you want to look at the actual futures contract. Uh, as far as the vehicle goes, using this as a vehicle to trade oil is completely fine uh, so long as your time frame is uh, short enough that you're not going to get eaten away uh, through all of that time decay. So, you know, as a swing trader holding something for a few days to a week or so, completely fine to use UCO. You're going to see the returns that you want to see. If you were to hold some, if you were to look to hold this for four months, five months, six months, a year, uh, that would be concerning. That's something that you wouldn't exactly want to do. So uh, with UCO, again, if we go back to uh, this picture here, this was the entry day, uh, the close of uh, the oil session on Thursday. And this was the setup we were looking for. It was a bit of a marginal setup. This is not a very clean explicit breakout that we often look for um, but i like this setup because uh, the risk uh, the stop loss could be set really tight and it kind of was flying underneath the radar uh, of what could potentially be sort of an explosive move i would figure a lot of people would start catching uh you know catching most people's attention as oil starts to break back above 54 a barrel so another day or two of upside as i think when you'd get a lot of, of chatter about it so getting in a little bit early here trying to get that move ahead of time with a tighter stop is sort of the rationale that we were looking for. Uh, again, you could see the expansion and range bit there on Thursday, breaking above the past four day highs and breaking above this trend line that extends from late 2016. That was the setup that we were looking for. So if we were to go back to UCO, you're not gonna see it as cleanly, uh, but this was the day we got involved in. Uh, that would be at 2247 was the exact price. And unfortunately, this was just a one day trade. We exited this trade uh, on Friday with the gap down in oil at 21.94. Now, why did we exit? Well, um, you know, again, the stop loss really tight in this trade. Um, we were looking to play this breakout that was, again, fairly marginal, but um, still had a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot going for it. I still like oil. I still think that we can um, take a nice move here up. Maybe it happens on Monday and we have to buy it up a little bit. That's fine if that is the case. Uh, but trying to get in here on Thursday with a tight stop loss and having the discipline to get rid of it if it doesn't work, I think is a very sound and, and sort of prudent way to go about this. Um, so we exited here uh, without wanting to take this into the weekend, have more gap risk and uh, potentially gap beyond our stop come Monday. Um, that was uh, sort of the reason why we wanted to get out of that a little bit early and just take the loss on Friday. So 2194, that was the exit there in UCO, which is exactly where we closed on the day. It did get a bounce off the lows, but you can see it more or less did lose that trend line and it did lose those recent highs. And if that is the case, I don't really want to be involved in it, right? The breakout is not necessarily there anymore as we're now back below those recent highs. So if we can get a move back above 2250 or so, uh, that would be interesting to me. Otherwise, uh, just more waiting for oil to uh, make a move. So UCO ended up being a $250 loss. If you were to normalize that on that $50,000 account, 1% risk per trade. Uh, and that was the trade. And if you were to take both um, the DE and UCO, ended up being a $60 loss on the week, minus 0.12% on that 50K account. So that was it. Again, only the closing trades. We have other trades that are still going on, uh, but that was the closed out activity. And uh, as I said at the top of the video, if you guys are interested in receiving these alerts, learning more about how we trade, you can head to thetraderisk.com forward slash premium or leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the weekend and talk to you again soon.